Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's YBP Gang, YBP Nation, YBP Boxing, YBP MMA. And let me tell y'all, this is probably the most excited I've been for a fight in a very long time. Something about, not necessarily when Izzy fights, but it's just, it's certain fighters in all, sport, all, all sports, you know, boxing, you know. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of Shakur, you almost, you almost got to tune in because you know there's some greatness there. Tank, Haney, Loma. Um, just those top power bound guys in the way, Usyk, Canelo, even if you're not the biggest fan of them, you just got to tune in. And Izzy's one of those guys, one of those special people that there's, there's a, you know, I know everyone uses the word, but there's an aura around when he fights, when he fights, you drop everything, you tune in, even though he's had those, you know, he's had the cannoneer fights and he's had Tory fights and the fights that have been lackluster. When he fights, you drop everything and you watch him fight because for all those fights, he has a Whitaker fight, the first one. He has the the, the Costa Masterclass. He has the Pereira knockouts. So he's one of the biggest stars that we've had in the sport. And I'm here. We talk about the press conference, obviously. I think I'm going to title this, Israel Adesanya is a crybaby. I did something similar to this. I don't, I don't, uh, don't watch that video. It's an older video. I did something like this, like I, earlier in my, where I was just like screaming at the camera, definitely not doing that ever again. Looking back at that, it was probably, that was a stupid video. I don't know why I, uh, did that. You know, you, you can, you can mature and stuff, but I'm never one to hide my video. Maybe, maybe I'll archive it maybe one day, but you know, that, that video can still give you. So I'm gonna keep it up. Uh, I'll stick, you know, if everyone wants to leave hate comments under that i'm gonna just i'm gonna just take it you know because at the end of the day i mean if you're gonna if you're gonna throw a punch you gotta expect something back but i, I stand by my opinion on the this out of thing you know I, i've always said that he's you know a little too emotional i think he's, he's being a crybaby in this whole situation a lot you know just whining and you know going on and on about the situation now we're specifically talking about i just crying at the press conference okay he i just saw him so Drickus mentioned two things. Drickus mentioned the dog touching stuff, which has been confirmed. I mean, you, you can see, if you look hard enough, you can see. He's been doing some weird stuff with dogs. That seemed to struck a nerve when he uh, he said, like, oh, underdog. And then he said, no one mentioned anything about dogs. That was the start of it. And then Drickus mentioned when he talks about there was a Nigerian. I think uh, he said, oh, my parents are from Nigeria. We, we moved somewhere to get a better life for ourselves so he can relate to izzy and yeah and then izzy went on about the you know i'm I'm a man of the earth i'm gonna take it to new zealand i'm gonna take it to nigeria i'm gonna take it to somewhere else and drinker said oh are you gonna take your servants with you and that just set adesanya off you know adesanya i forgot exactly what he said to that he said like you don't know where i'm from you don't know where i'm from uh my mom and dad you know they had to um Blah, blah, blah. What did he say? He said they had to work, you know, countless hours. You know, his mom was trying to be a nurse. His dad, you know, they woke up at 4 a.m. Stuff like this. So, so you know, with this situation, you know, I think it's very easy to look at it from a, um, you know, typical American's point of view. But at least to my knowledge, you know, having servants isn't necessarily make you a rich person. I think, like... If you're an American, if, if you had a servants over here, like, oh, like, you got to be rich. Like, but, you know, you could still be, like, lower middle class or, like, not crazy rich to have servants. So I think that's the disconnect. But I do think that really set Izzy off, you know, because he's like, yo, like, what the, this guy's like, because that, that's been a narrative on Twitter, that's what a lot of people have been saying. This guy has servants. This guy. But I didn't like how he just, like, didn't really, like... He kind of just deflected off that. I think he could have used that moment as a learning for other people, you know? Really, not even for Drickus, but for other people to address that, you know? But instead, he just deflected. You don't know where I'm from. You don't know, you know? Just with brute force, brute... You know, just pure emotion, you know? So I think that actually could be an analogy for how the fight plays out. You know, I don't, I don't know if Izzy might come into this fight not trying to be the, the style bender and maybe just go in there and just try to, you know, bang it out. Pause. Uh, 
but just try to go out there and um, really try to knock out Drickus, not be on his back foot, which I think will make for a good fight, but that's not a methodical Izzy. That's not an Izzy that is carrying, you know, strategy going into this fight. You know, I think he has to be smart going in there with a guy like Drickus. But I'm not, you know, I'm not entirely sure, at least from what we've heard from Izzy, is that he didn't come from a wealthy household and they came from like you know um like he didn't come from wealth you know like they weren't the richest in nigeria so they moved to new zealand for a better opportunity now my my all oh, my my biggest gripe was that he compared his situation to abdul's abdul razak al hassan and nganu's i didn't really like that because like nganu was like I mean, if Izzy was poor, Nganu was like, pfft, I don't even know what Nganu was. I mean, his situation was bad, you know? he he His situation was so bad, you know, even he moved to France and he was homeless over there. So for him to compare... Now, I think, I don't know, prior, I think I might have had a, a skewed view of how rich... I think a lot of people do still. They might not have the best perception of how rich or how poor or what Izzy's living situation was. Now, he, the, I guess the way I see it is that I feel like Nganu didn't really have a choice. I think Izzy could have stayed in Nigeria. He would have been okay, you know? Could have been could have been all right. But obviously, he moves to different places for better opportunities. It's not like Drickus, where Drickus is able to live in South Africa comfortably, you know, and train and you know, just live his life completely, you know, Nigeria is like, nah, I mean, Africa as a whole, you know, but I feel like in Ghanu, there was no choice, you know, there wasn't like, this guy had to make it, you know, that's why his story is so, so for him to compare his stories to those people, I was like, eh, but I, I think I had a skewed view, maybe he's closer to them, nah, but he ain't that, I mean, Ghanu's story is cooked, I mean, <laughs> like, that's the way, he was one in a million, so, but um, maybe they're maybe they're closer to maybe he's he's close to to that closer to that than maybe I thought I I'm not I don't think so you know obviously obviously the only people I mean Izzy Izzy said it you know best he said you don't know my story you know and I think a lot of people on Twitter are saying are are claiming to know Izzy's story obviously he's told us he's told us you know bits and pieces of it but we we truly don't know so we shouldn't jump to conclusions but I didn't like how he made that made it like Nganu's situation and his situation were like one to one. I don't think that's really fair to what Nganu went through. Obviously no one's gonna have the same exact story, but clearly, I mean, Izzy Izzy had a better upbringing than him, but you know, by a lot, it seemed like. You know? So obviously, I mean we're getting into intangibles, but it seemed to, you know, Drickus has done a very good job of antag not antagonizing, but at least uh, making Izzy feel some type of way, you know, getting into the personal business and really making him feel it, you know, making him cry at a press conference. That's not a good look at all. You know, whether whether he had a right to cry, whether he, you know, the fact that that's the thing that struck a nerve is, I mean, Drake has never mentioned any, any childhood trauma or anything directly personal. All he said was, you know, he made the servant's comment, you know, so for him to get so riled up about that. You know, and he didn't even really double down on the not African. Well, I guess he did, but even that, I mean, you could just see how deeply emotional is he is about this whole situation, man. It's very, it's very fascinating, and I'm excited to see how it plays out, man. This is why I'm so excited for the fight because it feels real. It feels real. It doesn't feel like a script. It doesn't feel like manufactured beef. It doesn't feel like. This is fake. It feels very, very real. You know, I think I think Izzy's definitely more emotional or emotionally attached to this fight than DDP is. But I, I also think, you know, to the sentiment, I think this is the big one. I think this is the big one for both these guys. If if Izzy was to go out here and win this fight, you know, I think this would and, and lose his next one. I feel like he'd be, oh, you know, cool. At least I got to knock out Drickus, you know. But if now if Drick is if Izzy lost this one and won every single fight after this, you know, it'd still be like, ah, I still let him win. You know, I still let him. So this one, this one means a little bit more because it has that added value. And I think same for Drick is, you know, I think Drick takes this opportunity to go out here and, 
you know, shut Izzy up, you know, he, he's been talking a lot, you know, they've both been talking a lot, so Saturday night truly, see. I mean, we always say Saturday night is judgment day, all the talk is over, but it really feels like that, especially for Izzy, he's put a lot of pressure on himself crying at the press conference, because that is not a good look, like, now the memes have already been posted, you know, so if Izzy were to lose, it's not a good look, it's hard to come back from, you know, Izzy doesn't have the best relationship with the media, with with the internet, with Twitter, all that type of stuff. We, I, I personally am not the biggest fan of Izzy. Never have been at all. I've tried to, you know, even when I was, like, supporting him for the Strickland fight, I was like, uh, yeah, it just, I don't know, man. He, he's just a very, like, polarizing person, I feel like. It, to, to to the point where even someone like Drick is saying what he's saying, you know, I, I, I still, I'm still supporting Drick, you know, and I think he's going to win the fight. So... Yeah, Adesanya is just so unlikable. And this 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 adds on to it, you know, him crying at the press conference. It's it's never it's never a good look for sure. You know, the way he's been talking, the way he's been, you know, going at Drickus. And Drickus, I feel like, has Izzy keeps mentioning it, mentioning it, mentioning it. I feel like Drickus hasn't I mean, obviously he talks about it here and there, but Izzy's made it a point, you know, I'm gonna do this because of this. Just keep keeps on, you know, harping on it, and, and 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 I love it too. I think it's I think it's good to go into fights with purpose. He's not making it up out of thin air, you know. Drake is a fan. They did start this. This isn't just like when I remember Rose Namajunas, like when she fought Zhang Wei Li, she made up this fake stuff, like you know, as motivation, like because of what China did to Lithuania. She doesn't like Zhang Wei Li. Zhang Wei Li's like one of the nicest people, I think. And she just made that out of thin air. This is not one of those situations where Izzy's making up. I mean, these are things that Drickus has said. You know, he doesn't believe that those guys are. I mean, he never said they're not African, but he said they're not, you know, repping the belt, you know, bringing it back to, you know, the African countries. And he's the one raising the flag. So, man, I'm excited for the fight, for sure. I can't wait for it. I love the fight. I, honestly, this, this this ain't even a rant. Honestly, I, I ain't gonna lie. Cause I, I hear I hear where Izzy's coming from. Honestly, I hear where he's coming from. Uh, the the title is kind of clickbait. I ain't gonna lie. This is not the rant story that I used to do. Like when I said Cyril Gunn was a duck. Yeah, this is not one of those rants. I'm not I'm not mad at anyone. I I think uh, I'm I'm very pleasantly pleased by how this promotion is playing out. It's not every day that we get a, a press conference so heated, so back and forth. Such good action on both sides. Someone cries. You know, this is this is good cinema. This is good for the fans. So, you know, uh, as much as I do, I, I, I heavily dislike Izzy. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of Drickus either. But, you know, of the two, I like Drickus a little bit more. Uh, as much as that, you know, I, I, I'd love to see all the scenarios play out. I'd love to see how... If Drick, if Izzy were to knock out Drick, how does that, how does that look? Like, if Drick is were to finish Izzy, what's the aftermath? You know, I'm, I'm very interested in the aftermath, how it plays out. The fight itself, it's, it's a banger fight. Forget all the narratives. If we just take out all this, Af- the whole African situation, this is just a good fight on paper. You got striker, striker grappler. You got someone who's going to pressure Izzy. They'll put him on his back foot. You got Izzy coming off of a tough performance. Can he... Can he learn from those mistakes and fight off his back foot and leg kick and be beautiful like he always is? Or will he succumb to the pressure? You know, how is he going to deal with the grappling? How is he going to, you know, improve his game? You know, these are two very good coaches going up against each other. You got Eugene Behrman, I believe. I'm not, I forgot what Drickus' coach's name is, but he's a very good coach in his own right. I think he might be Dutch. I'm not, uh, I mean, he might be South African. I don't even know. It probably, so he's he's South African, he's South African, but he might have some Dutch in him. But he has like a name like that. But yeah, very good coaching staffs going back to back, going going back and forth, and we putting forward some very good game plans. And yeah, man, I'm excited, man. It's gonna be a prime time. It's gonna be interesting to see the weight, the weight cuts as well, because the weight is gonna be happening 24 hours after. So. After this press conference, so they don't they don't have they don't have that much time to or sorry, the weight. How do I say this? Like they have the normal, but they might not be able to recover in time. Like obviously the weight, they'll they'll be able to make weight and all that type of stuff. But recovering for the fight, they might not be able to put on as much weight as they they used to or usually do because the fights will be twenty four hours 
uh, afterwards because they're trying to accommodate, I guess, the USA, uh, the U.S. audience having the fight. The fight Sunday. Yeah. My bad. The fight Sunday morning. So, yeah, more more like a, this is, I ain't gonna lie, this is like a, more of a ramble, but is that a sign of crybaby? Yes, he is. Um, guy is, you know, emotionally unstable, you know, can't, can't take, you know, any criticism or any, or, you know, any points thrown at him. You know, the guy's, looks like he's a little fragile, you know, and I think we're just starting to see him unravel. Let's see, you know, I don't like to listen, look into this stuff too much because it's like, Izzy said it too. He said, "I can." He said, "I'm a man, and I can, I can cry, and I can, you know, whoop your butt, you know." So, yeah, at the end of the day, if he can do that, this won't even matter. So, we gotta see it. But I can just—you already know. I mean, there's gonna be like some vid about like, oh, fight week, you know, some edits like, oh, he started crying. And then Izzy like whooped him and blah blah. blah the pictures and Tricky standing over him and yeah, it, it's gonna be. It's going to be interesting, man. I can't wait for the fight, man. I can't. I can't. Like, I I haven't been so excited for an event in a long time. Like, I think I was very excited for Aljo Sterling. Sorry. For Aljo and O'Malley. I was very excited for John Jones' comeback. I was very excited for any time in Ganu fought. Uh, even in the boxing for Fury. Um, nothing quite like this, though. I think this this really takes the cake. Even mm, Connor Dustin. No, I was very excited for the for the last Connor Dustin. Connor Dustin four. Mm, I'd have to really like look back. I wasn't that excited for Izzy Strickland going into it. I, you know, I just thought, yeah, it was gonna be an Izzy boring decision, and that didn't play out like it was. But this one, this one feels real, man. This one feels very, very real. You know, I, I, yeah, I was very excited for Haiti Garcia. Haiti Garcia was another one. Because that felt real. That felt like real beef. And it felt like two guys in their prime going at it, you know. Same year. These guys are both. I mean, maybe Izzy might be a little past his prime. And I guess that's how that's what we're going to figure out on, on Saturday. Like, is he, is he the same Izzy that we've seen? So I'm excited for the, you know, main event and everything on the card. You know, what, what, I've, what I've found is that when you do research for the card and you're, you know, you're trying to, you know, you're looking at bets as well. You're looking at, you know, all the... Because, you know, betting has become a, a huge part of just sports culture in general. You know, so when you can when you can really decipher and, you know, look through those odds and do your research, you know, it gets you really excited for some of these fights that you might not be ultimately so familiar with. You know, you got Ricardo Ramos... Sorry, Ricardo Ramos and Josh Kulabau. You know, you got Casey O'Neill, Luana Santos. You got the, the opening card or opening fight. You got Stuart Nico, Jesus Aguilar. You got Tom Nolan going up against Alex Reyes. You got, um, who's this guy? Oh, Jack Jenkins or Herbert Burns. You got Song Kanan versus Ricky Glenn. And then the whole entire main card is, is beautiful. You got Rosa Strike to Ivasa, Ursaid, Kai Car France. You, we could talk for days about these fights, man. You know, you got Dan Hooker, Gamrod. It's so much good fights on the undercard. You know, so much possibilities for how those fights could play out. I'm just I'm so excited for the car, man. I can't I can't say it enough. I thought honestly I wasn't even gonna record. I was just gonna do the the best bets and then just hop off. But I you know I like documenting my my UFC fandom, man. I think I think it's cool, man. I could come back to this in like five years, ten years, and be like, yo, you know, I was really a fan back then. So <laughs> yeah, so it's cool, man. It's cool. I even go back to my old videos, like when it was. Like, you know, all these fight weeks when I went, when I make a prediction, it's cool to look back on. It's cool to have these little memories about my fandom, you know, being a fan of the sport, how I was feeling at certain moments. But, yeah, this this rant went on for way too long. 19 minutes on a press conference. I ain't gonna lie, but that's, that's how I feel about the fight, man. It's, it's amazing. And I haven't even really gotten to the X's and O's about the fight. I, I hopefully, I want to film that probably after the weigh-ins. I think that's perfect timing. I want to get on, my goal is to get on this one platform, the uh, the UFC prediction tracker. I'm gonna definitely get on the their first video that they post for next week. This week, I don't know. I'll try to. It's not guaranteed they even gonna show your name unless you have good predictions. I think I'll have a really good week. I think I have some fire predictions. I go lie. I think I I think I got the 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 perfect card, man. Twelve for twelve or however many fights is on there. But I say that every week. I, I've been on a burner though. I've like been shooting seventy percent so. I think I think I think I just could keep that up. So 
yeah, that's all I got for y'all today. You know, I'm probably I want to make an edit probably for the for the fight for Izzy DDP. Can't wait for the fight, man. Can't wait. There's so many good fights on the card. Just I, I just want to know what happens, man. I want to know what happens. You just so we can say I stay tuned. You know, you see three or five pay per view. See you soon. Next up, UFC 305. Then UFC 306. We got, you know, O'Malley, Marab. It's, man, UFC's cooking right now, man. They got some good fights coming up. That's all I got for y'all today. A little long-winded, but we here with it. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe. Peace out, Mo Squire. You know what it is.